I saw this film, Death Takes a Holiday, 20 years ago, and in it was an idea that knocked me out, which is the idea of death uh, taking human form and deciding to see what it's like to be alive. Why at this juncture are you letting yourself be so concerned by business matters? I don't want anybody buying up my life's work, turning it into something it wasn't meant to be. A man wants to leave something behind. He wants it left behind the way he made it. He wants it to be run the way he ran it, with a sense of honor, of dedication, of truth, okay? Easy, Bill. You'll give yourself a heart attack and ruin my vacation. I tend to gravitate towards actors that I know will really do their part to not only be good actors, but who will really try and get involved with the other actors and really try and, you know, sort of take them the script and, and really, um, you know, extract everything they can to really... Uh, create the sense that there are relationships that go beyond the movie. The script takes, takes this platform of belief that, that life is tough and life is pain. Yet every now and then there are these perfect moments. It was truly one of the most unique scripts I've ever read. I mean, the, 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 the first time I read it, every time I read it, it just struck my gut, my heart. You know, it made me think. and. You just knew that it was a really special entity. There's sort of like this kernel that you want to keep finding out what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next, and that's, that's great. It's a very good script. It's a fine script. That's how I choose. I've gotten a little more choosy as uh, I'm getting older. It's a very complicated story. There are a lot of stories unfolding. A lot of characters have revelations in the movie, and not only about themselves, but about each other. So the, the permutations of all the different combinations uh, made it a, you know, an interesting puzzle for everybody to be constantly on top of. When I introduce you, if I say who you are, I don't think anyone will stay for dinner. Then don't. You know, it's a difficult character to create because who is that character? Nobody knows. There's no, you know, there are a lot of uh, representations of, the, of that kind of character in the history of literature and drama, movies, paintings. But it's all, you know, they're all, they've all been done in a way. And we were really trying to find a new way and a fresh way to deal with it. I say I'm going to do this thing, and then it comes the day of, okay, so what are you going to do? And it's death, all right? How, do, how the hell do I play death? I don't know what that is. It's not like you can do research. You know, it's not like you can go to a morgue and have some conversations. I mean, it's pretty wide open, isn't it? There are certain things that character might be, that character would be very used to being very powerful, very used to being unchallenged, very used to sort of dealing with having the final card on everybody and everything in the universe since the beginning of time. I figured, well, he must be a pretty lonely guy, right? I mean, there must be a condescending attitude towards the little things that people think are so important, you know, going on down here, and he must have a laugh over it. One of the things that that character has never had to do is reduce himself to the, what he would view as sort of a very petty thing, a, a human being. Maybe it's not as we see and he's on his own, he's just doing this job and he's been watching it for years and he's quite curious why people get so moved over this or, or cry out over that or love so much over this and, and maybe he'll go down and get a taste of it. I would prefer some peanut butter. How would you like that, sir, on some kind of toast? Toast? No, just the butter. Right away, sir. Why do you like peanut butter so much? I don't know. Hmm. I adore things like that. Food I can't do without. Don't you? Yes. It comforts you, doesn't it? Yes, I find that it does. What if I throw up? True, please. When death is brought into the house, you can imagine that strange things start happening. And Brad is playing death as an angel of death. It's not a devil, really, which is a really lovely choice. Brad did things in that first 24 hours with his character that took my breath away. And I thought, of course, you, you, you don't get to your position and, and sustain it and do such great work without being unbelievably talented. Most actors, young actors like uh, Claire and Brad, and they seem to be very confident in themselves in a good way. Um, 
So we make sure we, we have a lot of fun. We joke a lot. I love jokes. I love I have a great sense of humor, I think. And I like to fool, fool around on set. I like to be silly. We pick up on each other's rhythms and fun, and then I think it shows in, in the way the dinner scene comes out, say. I mean, do you remember the day Brad did the hustle for yes, us? Yes, he did the hustle. <laughs> he did the right. hustle for us, you yes. know. And and then they say and action and then we're all shooting a scene together and you find that you're taking in the other person more deeply mm. because you have just spent time breaking down any preconceived notion That's of right. them as Brad Pitt, Jeffrey Tambor, Anthony Hopkins. Now, oh, we're the fun people who hung out and you just yeah. did the hustle. Why don't we all have dinner again tomorrow night, okay? Dinner again? Yeah. You haven't had enough of us yet, Dad? Hmm. Mm. I have huge respect for Tony. He's a mystery to me, though. I, I'll, uh, he, uh, truly one of our greatest actors, and uh, how he gets to the, the places he gets to. You see, he's a he's a heavyweight. He's honestly the rawest talent that I've ever been around. It's like you know, even when he thinks he's screwing up, you know, you just wish you had that. You know, <laughs> like, you wish that was your scene. I enjoy. The process of uh, you know coming on the set in the morning, saying good morning, making a few jokes. People are generally very pleasant and good to be around. I don't uh, go out of my way to relax them, but if somebody's nervous of something, I try and reassure them. The other night, Tony was making a uh, a speech, and it was it was it was sensational. It was absolutely fabulous, and I went, oh my god! I mean, everyone was just really uh, uh, it, it was it was fabulous. It was like his last last farewell speech and the, the acting in that was, uh, I mean, both Marcia Gay and I were just like, you know, crying. I'm gonna break precedent and tell you my one candle wish. That you would have a life as lucky as mine. Where you can wake up one morning and say, I don't want anything more. When I saw the film, the first thing that came to mind was, uh, it's a little, grand but a symphony and that's the way marty has put put it together and told this story i see him as a, as a conductor leading this great symphony and 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 bringing up a little bit of the horn section here playing down a little of the bass over there and he's, he's got that touch you're doing hundreds of takes and you're four months into the movie and marty will say we'd come up to me and say remember that moment when you were in that in that part of the story he's like and that comes out, and you would just turn on him, and it was, you know, I would be like, thank you, thank you. He likes to do many, many takes. We, you know, doing it over and over and over. And we, we got to a point of jo joking about it because I can't do those takes. I do four takes. All I thought about was making sure that all the stories w were right and all of them worked, and that every moment that every actor was performing, that it would relate to the whole story and relate to each individual story that it had to. Uh, that was sort of where my focus was. That kept me pretty busy. It's hard to let go, isn't it? Yes, it is, Bill. And that's life. What can I tell you? Should I be afraid? Not a man like you.